So, Sam, as always on this podcast, we want to try and um, dig into your brain and your, you know, hundreds of games of experience and not just say what everyone else will be saying. What everyone else will be saying is, wow, new manager bounce, 10 points in four games. Millwall moving up the table. Are they clear of trouble? Fine. My question to you, Sam, how has he done it? Yeah, I, I think this is quite a difficult one, mate, to get uh, too complex about, to, to be honest. So I'm, I'm getting my caveat in now. Um, I don't think there's been too many surprises, has there? Uh, you, you look at the shape there. Obviously, they were playing something of a 3-4-2-1 under Joe Edwards, if if memory serves. That 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 was, I think, quite flexible under his, his management. He didn't stick to one style, but... Uh, once kind of set up, but but latterly that is what he's gone for. So you've got two very hard-working um, wire players there. Um, the two midfield players I think is interesting. If you think back to, I think it was last week's podca- podcast, I spoke about Casper Denor possibly coming back in for this game to give them a little bit of creativity, which has, has still been... You know, evident that lack of creativity in the games that they've been been taking maximum points from. But I don't think he was even in the eighteen. I think Neil Harris did speak of him post match to say that he has been training well. But at the moment, Savile, obviously a player he knows really well, and and, and Billy Mitchell uh, are getting that nod in that department. And I think you know played pretty well again on this occasion. Mitchell, someone who div- divides opinion. I think had a good game. Savile, that combination, him and Tanganga, has um, supplied a couple of massive goals away at Southampton and and again at the weekend. And you cannot neglect ever that set piece threat. I think Millwall and Ipswich just joint second to Cardiff in in that regard. And you look at, I suppose, a lack of front players, a lack of options for for Neil Harris. The key to them getting enough points in this division is going to be about clean sheets and finding a way to score. And it, invariably, set pieces are going to be a a, a really fruitful um, avenue for them. So, yeah, I don't think there was loads in this game at the weekend. Uh, I think there's been some improvement from some individuals. I think Tanganga's one that I saw live a couple of times early on and he looked a little bit uncomfortable playing the type of football that Joe Edwards wanted Millwall to play under him. So... Yeah, there's definitely an improvement in him, and that's probably uh, because it marries quite well with Neil Harris and how he wants to set up his team. The more simplified brief has been asked of, um, and that's no criticism of the Millwall players. Um, Not only might it be a more simplified brief, but it's one that I think that fan base buys into Mm. a lot, um, and just fits a lot better that that Mm. style with that fan base, doesn't it? And what they expect Mm. from their players. Yeah, you've got that and then you've got a group of players where the majority will know exactly how um, Neil Harrison and David Livermore work and exactly what they'll want them to execute on the on the pitch. I think that's probably also been evident with the lack of changes as well. That's, that's partly due to um, circumstances in terms of player availability, but he wants that core of 12, 13 players, I would suggest, Neil Harris, that he's going to make maybe one or two changes each week and trust those players, try and build those relationships with them. But of course, you know, we'd be kidding ourselves if if we would, we're not saying that a lot of this is just down to organisation on the training ground and good old school motivation. And 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 that's what we're seeing. Um, I think the majority of the games, apart from Southampton, where they, they obviously had to give up a few chances, there's been very few chances on, on the Millwall goal. Don't remember there being too much in in this game, and and again, you know, with Jake Cooper, uh, someone that he'll trust implicitly, and and Tanganga, um, Joe Bryan, I thought was a really good capture in the summer. He's not had a brilliant season, but him and in Leonard, I think there's enough there to to continue, especially with the games on the horizon, to to be pretty um, pretty stodgy defensively, and and not need the necessity to get loads of goals, but. There you go. I've spoken for a couple of minutes. Uh, I've tried to give you a few little ingredients as to why, but I think we all know the, the main reason, and that's a unified den in the next few weeks under someone that rightly is absolutely loved in that part of the world. Um, you know, I, for one, was 
yeah, not 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 affected hugely because it doesn't directly affect me. But seeing someone that I played with a long time ago and and someone who I watched score so many goals for that club and manage them so successfully to be getting the stick he was towards the end of his previous tenure, there's something yeah quite beautiful about him seeing him back there and fist pumping and getting them all going again. Is this a um, is it too early to give a tick in the box to the ownership? Because when we were talking about the you were, mm. you were in front of the problems that Joe Edwards were having. We talked about that before it mm. all went down. And I said, oh, you know, man, what big call to take out Rauer. And obviously, mm. uh, crossing the box, a, a big L for the higher in the middle. Is it too early to say the ownership's now kind of, mm. uh, not necessarily redeemed themselves, but certainly brought back some credit with the fan mm. base? I'm like hugely conflicted about, about that, I suppose. Uh, just because, you know, I cover a lot of games at Mill and uh, I know, you know, budgetary wise and in terms of resources, you know, it's incredibly difficult for Millwall probably to have the reality that they could get in the Premier League in the next few years. And I know tip people will point at Luton and say, that, look what they've achieved. But I think when we spoke on this topic early part of the season, Ben, you said, yeah, but look how they recruit. I think it was you anyway, and look what their strategy is. And absolutely, I think if you contrast between the two clubs, um, that's what Mill will have to get to. And along with that, I'm not sure you'll get out of the division being so one-dimensional as they were maybe previously under Harris. And it's probably an argument, but maybe under Gary Rout as well. I think you have to have slightly better footballers in some of your departments. So that's why I'm conflicted because, listen, if Neil Harris keeps Millwall in the division by a distance, do I want him to, it doesn't matter what I think, do I believe he should be at the club at the start of next season? Absolutely, he should. But is that going to give them, uh, I don't know, the the impetus to have that alignment from the, the boardroom to, to the management to improve the squad in a way that's going to get them into the promotion shake-up. I'm not so sure you can do it playing that football. Um, there may be examples, uh, and I'm open to, um, to to people that watch this to tell me about teams that have done it playing. But I just think, you know, when you're, when you're trying to improve the, um, the excitement levels, the attacking nature of the side, um, you know, that's all got to be done over a longer period. And then that's why, as bad as the results were under Joe Edwards, I was still like, oh, that's a bit of a missed opportunity. You know, if they could have just seen it through and maybe just stayed in the division by hook or crook, then January would have been really interesting. The next season would have been really interesting to see if they could become um, a bit of everything. That passion, that incredible support when it's going well, but also a team that, all of a sudden has a bit more craft and a bit more wow factor. So we'll see. We will indeed. And we'll clip that one out. We always have good discourse with the um, Millwall fans. I don't do that. I just get, I just get stick. Don't do that. Yeah, you won't. You, get you, won't. you absolutely won't. No. Um, I, I think, but I, I just, just finish on that. You know, I, I think the most honest and yeah, balanced of Mill, ardent Millwall supporter would say, Kai, it's a, it's a tricky period in catch, the, catch in the in it, yeah. history yeah I mean like Crystal Palace down the road albeit Premier League and established Premier League they've been in this kind of predicament for five years haven't they cool we just got to win one nil every week and rely on the back five um you know um soaking up copious amounts of pressure to get us over the line and there's a bit of that at Millwall isn't there it's getting that balance isn't it between um being exciting um and also staying in the division or showing a little bit more intent. So I'd be interested to know what the Millwall fans want ultimately. And would it be, you know, nearly in charge with a um, a bit of a blank canvas in the summer to to make that surgery, which I think the squad definitely needs, doesn't it? Um, there's going to be quite a lot of changes there uh, in, the, in the summer. Do they want Neil to do that and build a squad that could potentially challenge? Or do they want to see that that big sea change once he's, uh, he's achieved the great escape? Get your thoughts in the comments. Neil Harris and Millwall on fire.